In today's video, you're going to get to see a beautiful 1966 Chevy Corvair. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. If this is the first time you're coming to my channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you being here today. If you've been to my channel before, then as always, welcome back. Thank you so much for the comments that you leave for me, for your thumbs up, for you subscribing to my channel, and also remembering to hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is being released. Today you're going to meet a gentleman. His name is Bill. He has a gorgeous 1966 Chevy Corvair. It's the Monza edition. It was actually a father and son project with his son Luke that he's been working on for over 13 years. It's got a great trim package and by far one of the coolest license plates that I've ever seen. So without further ado, let's hop in, let's go for a drive and let's check out this beautiful 1966 Chevy Corvair. Oh, look at this beauty. Okay, Bill, rev the engine. Oh, that's a lovely sound. And can you honk the horn? Nice. Come on out, sir. <laughs> All right. What a lovely, lovely car. Oh, there we go. Well, thanks for having me, Kevin. Oh, my pleasure. Tell me what you got here. Well, we've got a uh, 1966 Chevrolet Corvair. How long have you had it? Uh, we've had this car now for 13 years. And, uh, and we've loved it ever since. And, Sorry, uh, I just can't get over the license plate. Every <laughs> time I see it, it makes me smile because it's so true, isn't it? Well, there's a great story with that. And you know, when you think about it, uh, my early days, I was, I was a Corvette guy at a big right. box Stingray. And <clears throat> where was I going? I was always going out with the other wife in my life, so, <laughs> or the other lady. <clears throat> so the big joke when I got back out of motoring, got back in again when our son was 16, Luke, who by the way, helped me uh, put this together, his oh, father fantastic. and son project. Um, uh, we just, uh, where was I there? Just but, but the license plate. Yeah, license yes. plate, sorry. So the license plate. So we're sitting around and we got to put a plate on it. And my wife, uh, Linda, Morgan, my daughter, and Luke, uh, my son, they thought around, we were talking. And the big joke was, well, what about other wife? So they keyed it in and sure enough, it was available. Really? We were shocked. 
So we bought it. So that's the big joke. The big joke in the family is, where are you going? I'm going over with the other wife. Oh, that's just <laughs> lovely. That's terrific. Yes, you know how many people won that license plate as well? Oh, I do know. You could and probably sell plate. that by itself. I know. Oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> they love the car and they, uh, they love the plate. You know what, the, the lines on this car are just mesmerizing, aren't they? There's something magical about it. Well, it is, Kevin. And you know, when you think about it, <clears throat> I mean, uh, these things went through a styling change. Uh, I think you saw Mario was uh, doing the, uh, yeah. he had a 63 ragtop. And they went through a styling change after 64, 65. Uh, they came up with this body style and uh, 66, right through to 69, where they ended production right. for this vehicle. But uh, really great car, uh, really great car. And what makes this the Spider model? Well, this isn't the Spider model. This oh. is the Monza model. The Spider, my son liked the emblem, so we put oh, them on sorry, the car. Oh, good for you, right. okay. So, but it's a Monza model, which, you know, in 66, uh, this was the car that had all the, you know, the real nice trim package in 66. Okay. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's trimmed out nice. It's all original. Everything's inside's original, uh, except for the deck, which we bolted up underneath. But we kept everything the same. You know, the and little, it looks pretty good. The trim features, like even around the rear, yeah. brake lights and everything else, all original. Yes. This is how those are came. 66, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Even 65 was a slightly different bezel in the back, but uh, really great car. But you know what? Even like the small styling elements, the way this sort of curves in yeah. and out again. I mean, yeah. just those little unique parts that make this car just awesome. What's interesting though, you know, I mean, we talk about, I mean, everybody talks about the car bear being unsafe and this, that, and the other. You know, that's a bit of a misnomer. I don't think that's correct. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, Nader was doing his thing in the early 60s, but 60 to 64, they had that swing arm sway bar suspension in the rear, which was a little, can be a little tricky. Right. Uh, in 65, the biggest engineering change beyond the body style was they went to uh, independent suspension. Big, big, big change for, right. uh, for Corvair. Right. Uh, that wasn't that was that killed the Corvair. Everybody thinks Nader did. I mean, he had his political aspirations. For but, sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the end, in 1971, the National Transportation Board deemed this car as safe as any other car in the 60s. It was just, uh, it just got a bad rap, you know? People forget that part, don't they? Well, they, they do. They, but but they, they just they, remember the bad rap part. That's right, Kevin. Yeah. I got the book in the car there, but, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, it's quite interesting. So here, the, like the front lip yeah. would have been on the original car too, the black? Yeah. No, well, I added that trim. Okay. That's a 69 Camaro spoiler. Right, okay. <clears throat> and that's the one that fit, that trimmed out the car nicely. Nice. So my son and I uh, made a decision, we'd put that on. And you know, a lot of guys put that in uh, on their Corvairs, they put the spoiler I think on. it looks really cool. I think it, it, it adds sharp. a little flair to it. Absolutely. I love the, uh, again, with the, uh, the lights there. Yeah. The little, uh, I don't even know what you call it. I have the same thing on mine. I just added them because I like the look. So in the them. back, that's original. Yes. And these are aftermarket blue dot. <clears throat> uh, you oh. can add on. They can just add in the lights. We like them. It looks cool. Adds I to the think car. I so. Absolutely. Yeah. What an absolute beauty. The rims, though. Look yeah. at that. Look at the chrome on this. Just pops. Yeah. So I guess, Kevin, when these things first came out, they all had 13-inch tires, right? But this has 69 Chevelle brakes. Okay. And the other thing that's really changed on the car, and we put these 15-inch on, and the car handles much better. It's got, you know, 205s in the front, 215s in the back, which is really, for Corvair guys, I mean, that's really the optimum tire to put yeah. for this car. And, uh, and it works well. You know and what's it stands interesting, well. though? Um, when, <clears> I, when I looked at Mario's car, because it's a convertible, you don't really get a good sense of the height of the car, but it's really quite low. It is. Right? It is. It it's is. Not something. as low as your MG over there. No, but, but it's, it's not, low. It's not far <laughs> off, though. When you think about it, it's, it's not that far off. Yeah. Yeah. And the colors are so similar too. Yeah. Right? Truthfully, my, even my MG's color is not the original MG color. It is a General Motors color right. that somebody had painted years and years ago. But I, I like the red. I think it's all cars should be red. I agree with you, cars, Mario. But some cars just work, right? Hey, Kevin, so, yeah. So, Kevin, this was originally blue. Oh, and really? And now it's a red. So, and this is a Willow Run car out of Michigan. What, what does that mean? So, Willow Run was the manufacturing plant in, uh, in Michigan. Okay. I think. Chevrolet had seven plants that were producing this. This is a Willow Run car. Uh, we're the third owner, and it's going to stay in the family forever. It's not Oh, that, so, isn't that priceless? Yeah, that, it's that's not going anywhere. Want. That's what you want. I love also the, uh, the side mirrors and that. Just, just <laughs> yeah. the design of it all. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Beautiful. 
So what size engine is it? So it's got a 110, 164. Okay, let's take a look at that. It's been, uh, it's been And of course on. it's in the back of the car, yeah, which always amazes on. me and I love it. Yeah. Wow. So that's another thing Chevrolet did back in the early 60s, well ahead of their time. Now the VW, they had air-cooled, right? Yes. But you know, what Chevrolet did differently beyond the air-cooled, this was a flat six. They were the first to the market with flat six. And a lot of guys compare this to the Boxster Porsche, but when you, when you go back and you do a little bit of searching, Porsche came after. They copied this, you know, a few years later. I think it was in the 911. Interesting. So, so yeah, they took this concept and they did some different things. But Chevrolet was to the market first, and you know, good on them. Hey, look at this. I just noticed your spare tire. No, notice anything similar? Well, if you break down, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that something? It's identical. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. So, yeah, I know who to call, right? And this yeah. looks like it's never been used. I got you, Kevin. No, no. No, I mean, this car only comes out sunny days. I've never put a hose on it. I think Luke and I put a hose on it the first day uh, we owned it. In 13 years, we've never put a hose on it again. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Everything about this car is just sings to you, doesn't well, it? Thanks, Kevin. It's the, it's the design of this vehicle. It just, yeah. oh. We put some headers on it because it's, it's a little bit noisier than the other Corvairs. Right. But the headers work. It's got the Flowmaster exhaust. And uh, she goes pretty good. No, it's beautiful. And so what's in the front then? Let's have a look. Well, the front's the trunk. All right. I always find it interesting. The fuel still goes at the front of the car yeah. and they pipe it all the way to the back. Right? Yeah. Oh, this is so, nice. So what I've done here, Kevin, is I've put a Coca-Cola cooler in there Absolutely. and it's got the cleaning supplies and tools if anything happens, It's, it's right? vintage. It looks the yeah. part. And here's the book that Nader talked about. But oh. really, I mean, it was nice, but it was incorrect. Yes. It turned out to be, it deemed to be incorrect. Yeah, but he sold books, right? You well, sure he the did. Money you make but uh, Corvair got an unnecessary bad rap i mean um, uh, totally and i think totally. i said earlier and you know the national transportation safety transportation board deemed this a safe car yeah, yeah, any well, other and, car just, in the ju and just in case you yeah. got one of those too <laughs> just as a back yeah yeah but it was the suspension right it was the oh, handling yeah. that was the issue back then back in the rear but it's fine now these cars are great awesome and it's a good way into the entry into the market they're not expensive and uh you know for folks that want to get into it i mean this is a great entry car you know totally you know? And she looks beautiful. Like, there's <laughs> something about it. That is for the uh, windshield washer. Yeah, but it's okay. empty. We never use it because we're never out in the rain. I'm, I'm like you. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we just emptied it. Good for you. Yeah. It's so clean, though. Well, like, they should be clean. I mean, uh, you know, the nice thing about these cars, you know, we're lucky to have this because now we become, you know, you take care of the car now. The caretaker. Now, it's, yes. it's, 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 you know, yes. it's keeping the car, you know, safe and running, you know, and, and going for many, many years. Right and I think on. that's important. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And for generations to come, because again, this car turned heads back in the day. It did. still does today. Right? It does, and it's funny you'd say that. And when people look and they say, you know, I have this open here, and they go, the trunk's in the back. Go, yeah, it's in the back. A little bit of engineering history. You know, GM was ahead of their time with this. For sure. And, uh, you know, they really got the credit that they deserve for that. I, I agree and, with And uh, here we are. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, it's just So lovely. we're pleased to have it, my, uh, my oh, whole family and I. Totally, you know? totally. So you've always been a Corvette kind of guy from the sound of it, hey? And yeah, I love sort of the I, happy, uh, yeah. happy compromise in between. Interior. I love the VET, uh, but I love this too. This has got, this has got nice lines. It looks pretty good. Uh, original steering wheel as well. Yeah, original everything in there. I love this kind of a horn system, yeah. like that half, uh, what do you call that, half rim or something? Yeah. The one thing that, you know, that we did do is that it came with an auto delete, right? So this was an option back in the 60s that, but it was just a blank. So I bought it. I bought a, I bought this dash out of the U.S. Sorry, another say, dash. say that again. Auto delete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just a blank. Oh, so it was just, a, it was just a blank. A space holder almost. You can yeah. stick something else in there. So it was an option back then. This car didn't have it. So right. I bought a, an extra piece out of the U.S. Nice. and had a clock on a gamble for 50 bucks. Oh. And I thought, wow, what a what steal. A, what I, a, that I, is I a hope steal. it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure enough, we got it out cleaned it up, took it out, put it back in this dash, original dash, yeah. thing worked. You know, and to buy them now, they're foreign shape. If you can <laughs> right find on, it. Right on, if you're lucky enough to find yeah. it. Right on. And you know, the nice thing about these cars, Kevin, is that the parts are readily available. Right. You know, you got California, Corvair, Clarks, you got Rafi, you got all these Corvair shops that, you know, parts are available. You can build a whole car. And that's what's nice, you know, for folks that are getting into this. Definitely. It's, it's, it's a good car. I get that a lot too. Like, Older car, oh, can you get parts for it? Absolutely, you can get parts for anything. Absolutely, yeah. I love the shifter. Yeah, yeah, two-speed right? power glide. Just amazing. Yeah. Look at you that. Know? And it's not in the way. No, no, there's so much room in there. It's. Uh... But they never had bench seats here. 
Uh, not Always in this model. The, not in this model. No. But the okay. earlier '60s, I believe they had bench seats. Right. Uh, like I think it was early '60s for sure. I think even Mario's uh, ragtop had uh, yes. buckets, right? And that big uh, umbrella-looking thing—that's your brake. <laughs> yeah, that's the lovely. That's the brake. That's. The and what's with the vintage radio down there? That, oh, I love that's that classic. thing. Classic. Yeah, I love the color. The, yeah, yeah, it's from the '60s. It works. Uh, is that it works what great. Bake, bake light, something like that. It's uh, that plasticky finish. Yeah, it's uh, it's mid to late '60s. Oh. That radio. It kind of fits the groove. I'm gonna ball glove here for you. If you want to throw a ball later. <laughs> <laughs> you come prepared. <laughs> but you know what? I mean, there's lots of space in here too. Like there, you get a family in here. Like it's it's well, a there really is. practical. Well, the nice car. thing, these seats even flip back, so they flip down and it really? becomes a storage. You can wow. put. A, you know, a case of beer in there. Yeah, more importantly, yeah. Well, yeah. well what else would you want? Because <laughs> <laughs> once you fill up the front, you got to put it elsewhere. Right? Exactly, Kevin. <laughs> oh my God! No, no, she's beautiful. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Beautiful. I love this car. Like the little things about it as well. Like these little, I don't know, decoration parts. Yeah. Like so again. they were. So this was. These were. Um, <laughs> this was. Uh, this was. This was standard back in the '60s. '67 right. or '66 for this car. This was. This was the standard for this car. Is, is that the original radio? Yeah. That so is that's the what it looked radio. like, right? Yeah, yeah. Does it work still? Absolutely. Wow. The thing, so that you know, you're not you're not doing it well. Okay, I right. believe everything it. works. Yeah. Wear out. The only thing we that's did rare. was we, we we you know we just bolted a deck up nice. Yes. And we made a box so you don't cut into is panels that, is and old a, cars. Is that Alpine by any chance? What yeah. Is, that? is it really? Yeah. Oh, that's old school right there too. Yeah. So you don't cut Wonderful. into panels and cars and uh, you know yeah, my son and I agreed and it's uh, it's pretty cool. And the speaker grill is uh, is yeah, that the front? Yeah. For the yeah. single for that radio that's original. And the defroster for the front is there too. So everything everything there. is in the same. Yeah, yeah. And then here you know you've got also for the heat right. There's one back here too. Oh right? really? Okay. So See, look at that for Car warms up for fall. Yeah. Uh, pretty quick. In the spring, if you want to take her out, but I don't take it out too early. No, Not until either. the roads get all yes, clean. Yes, yes. Right? Get rid of the salt. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God, Bill. She's beautiful. Thanks, Kevin. And the license plate always kind of makes me chuckle. Honestly, it's just yeah. priceless. You can take a boot? Yeah, let's do that. All right. All right. It's, uh, I don't know, I if you it. lose it, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. put it in the mailbox, it'll come right back on. to you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they still do that. Uh, oh, I love your uh, little... Uh, Compass there. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, okay. Fire this up. Keys in my pocket. You know, I'll always left cars where the keys go in the dash. Yeah, and As opposed to the steering column. It's yeah. just different. Cool. Oh, what a sound. That sounds great. Though. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. For a Corvair, really? I mean, for a flat six, I mean, some folks think, you know, you got a small eight in there. No. No, no, it sounds great. Yeah. Lovely rumble. Ah, awesome. Well, it's those okay. glow masters, eh? Oh, yeah, for sure. Every, every bit helps. But, okay, we're like going to go? go right outside and we're going to get to the street. So back out that way, behind. That is a nice sound. It's not bad, eh, Kevin? Yeah, I love it. Like, honestly, it's got this... I think all it's cars got this it. meanness to it, and yet it's smooth and everything at the same time. I, I can't describe it, but it is cool. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin. Is the interior all original, too? Like, it yeah. would have been this sort of uh, dome light and everything? Yeah, everything's original, Kevin. Including the uh, rear view mirror? Uh, yes. The only thing, the pepper. Uh, uh, well, the good what, luck what, pepper. Is the, what is the deal with that? A lot of guys have the Cornitos, and this is just for luck. Oh, awesome. Okay, we'll turn right here. <laughs> I love it. You know what else is good, though, Bill? It's, it's little things like the visibility. You know exactly where the front of the car is, right? Most cars, they swoop down so much, you're, you're kind of estimating where the front might be, but you can actually tell. Yeah, it's true, Kevin. Lots Very of visibility, good. lots of space. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry. The only thing is, you know, you've got the lap belts. It's not like the newer vehicles now. Sure you have the shoulder straps. Yeah. So you have to be a little bit more careful. But uh, I mean, most guys are not driving like no. You know, wild animals in their old classic no, cars. Sure. They're, they're cruising. Yeah. Uh, maybe open her up on the highway once in a while. But just, you never do it. Just a little it. bit, just to clean out the old carbs a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, you never do it in the city streets. No, and, you know, you really take care of these. You know, we're really we're lucky to have these things in our lives, and I, I'm happy to have this one. You know, so sure. here we are. You know what, honestly, I feel the same way, we're privileged, 
we enjoy it, let's make the most of it, let's take care of them. Why, why race around unnecessarily as well? Rather go in style slowly than race somewhere fast, so that's, that's my view. Uh, I agree, Kevin. So what was the very first car you bought then, Bill? The very first car? The very first car. Well, the first car I owned was a 1971 Gremlin, which my father the Gremlin. <laughs> gave to me. Yeah. <laughs> 232 three-speed, and then I ended up buying my Grand Prix, 1984 brand new out of Grand Brown Motors down right. on Weston Road, yeah. and then I bought the 69 Big Block Stingray, 427 so Tri-Par. always been a GM kind of guy? Yeah. Why is that? Why, why not a Ford? Why not try something else? Like, what, what, what was it about the GM that always attracted you? I can't give you an honest answer. Okay. I just like the styling of these vehicles. Everybody's got lovely cars. I mean, you look at there's some great vehicles out there. Yeah. I mean, all the years. I mean, most of the vehicles are just stunning. But we just I just gravitated the GM and just hung with it. I just oh, been a loyal GM you. fellow. Absolutely. And <laughs> why not? It works. But like I said, you know, this was a project of my son and I. You know, he was 16 at the time. Right. You know, let's work on something together. Keep him from. Uh, and all potentially drifting. He never did. He was a really good young man. He's growing up. He's got his What's own his family. Name? Luke. Luke, if you're so, listening, you did the right thing. Dad's proud of you, right? Hey, but isn't that true? As a parent, that's all you want is kids that kind of follow the right path. And all we can do is help guide them a little bit. Yeah, I'm proud of both my kids. My yes. daughter, Morgan, and Luke. Oh, awesome. And they're both doing great. Good. They both have their own lives right now. And uh, they're doing great. So I'm very proud. My wife and I, Linda, are very proud. Excellent. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Good to hear. Yeah. Oh, and I should say our grandkids too. <laughs> you have grandchildren? <laughs> yeah, we've got two grandchildren, which we're also equally proud of. Oh my lord, you don't look that old even. Oh, good thank for you, you, man. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, so you really have done your bit as a father and. Uh, parent anyway um, and you can turn right here sorry well we we believe we tried to do our best and then our kids have made wise decisions and uh, you know we're proud proud of our kids proud of everything and I guess as my wife would say you know living a life of gratitude so we're thankful for many things in life and yes. uh, you know and here we are for sure and we'll turn right here again but you know what Th that is something true Bill I mean if if anything we've learned something from this pandemic is First of all, how precious life is, how fragile it is. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, you know, how the smallest change can make such a big impact sometimes. We take it for granted until we lose it, right? So, definitely. We're going straight through? Just straight through, yeah. I love the sound of this engine. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. I think it's just the coolest sound. Thank you, Kevin. And the visibility on this thing, too. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's everywhere. You can see everywhere. And I, you yes. know, that's another thing, you know, GM, you never get really good credit for. I mean, they, they really built a solid vehicle here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of them out in the road. I mean, this particular year, I believe they uh, produced 109,000 for this year. Okay. Uh, but, you know, this car was really quite a success. I mean, you think about the full production from 60 to 69 before production dropped off. Right. You know, they produced just slightly north of 1.8 mil million of these vehicles. Wow. So that's a success in itself. I mean, back, you think about when they were producing cars, this is a big number. Yes, for uh, sure. It's just unfortunate what happened. Yeah. And uh, and here we are. And those folks that are driving these cars, I mean, we're all thankful. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's thankful. No, I would agree. Now, I noticed you have a badge there for the Ontario uh, Corvair Club. So is there a big following uh, in the province? Yes, yeah, so of course, Ontario was a club that uh, I belong to. There's a good group of folks there. They're very knowledgeable. Right. They've got a lot of parts. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, the Queensway, uh, Queensway Cruisers, Queensway Classics. So we was part of that for, I mean, 25 years before okay. Bonnie and George retired. And uh, we hope they bring it back. But uh, then I guess they transferred everything off. The COVID was the factor. Yeah. And uh, here we are. So now we, uh, my buddies and I hang out at uh, the Mississauga Car Club's uh, event at uh, Dixie and... Uh, yes. You know, what is it? Dixie and Cosper, right? That's or right. Dixie and... A yeah, Dixie yeah, Outlet Mall. Dixie basically. Outlet Mall. Yes. Yeah. A little, bit of, a little bit of a plug for the old uh, local group of ours. So they're a good, good group of boys oh, there. I absolutely. mean, they all, they're all nice fellas. They, yeah. uh, they take care of people. They're doing a they good do. job. Yeah. And uh, not sure how long they're going to have that uh, the location for, but right now it's a great location for a lot of folks because, uh, you know, it's us off the highway. And, yeah. uh, and plus, you, you get that whole crowd from the Toronto area as well as the Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington. Like, it's, it's accessible. And you're right, Kevin. It's a neutral location yeah. for a lot of folks. Very I mean, I think me with Bonnie, and, uh, 
what an amazing guy. So kudos to Ron as well. And yeah, the gang, so I sure. agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, I can't thank you enough, Kevin. This is for me. This is lovely. I mean, you know just, what? Uh, the privilege out. is truly mine. As I say, I mean, <laughs> to me, uh, I'm gonna turn left here. Okay. All I'm trying to do is tell the story as to why somebody loves their car, and it's not to, you know, some. I'll be honest. I mean, YouTube is full of people that will criticize cars or this is a good car, this is a bad car, here's what you should buy, here's what you should not buy. I don't really care about that. To me, it's like, why do you love your car? I mean, we, as car lovers, we all have our passions and there's something that attracts you to this type of a car and it's, to me, it's, it's really, that, I, that is what I find exciting. Like, what, what attracted you to the Corvair? Well, it was just a great price point. It looked good. Uh, of course, we had to do a lot of work to it. Yeah. It had high back cloth seats when we got it, but the original seats were in the garage and we were lucky to get them. Uh, so they delivered them with the uh, car, with the seats. But this really is a labor of love with my son and I, Luke. And, uh, right. you know, he's a good young man and we've worked on this together. And uh, eh, so he's getting this thing. Sorry, okay. Morgan. Okay. <laughs> but uh, and Morgan's thinking, oh, Dad. <laughs> uh, she loves the car too. Uh, the whole family does. But uh, no, that's great. you know, really, this was a special because my son and I worked on it. Fantastic. Uh, I love the way you just put it into uh, the shifted the uh, what is that in now? Neutral. Yeah. And then you got to use the brake. So this is it. So you don't actually have a park. No. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay. No, no wonder she rolled a little bit ahead of yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are those two little knobbies there? So this here's the lights and then the windshield washers, ah, which okay. never get used, but right they can win. That's how you pump it. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. A little bit odd, eh? But here we are. So heating, defrost, no AC, none of that stuff. Just no. Just basic and no. uh, very good. Yeah. And the, uh, the cup holder Canadian Tire Special? It was, and it actually worked very well. <laughs> right on, I know. <laughs> holds the radio and Beautiful. or holds the uh, phones and some yes. keys and stuff, and it keeps things safe. Absolutely. And ashtrays for days, right? Like yeah, well, the yeah, ashtray, we don't use it, but I mean, there's it's two of them back then. Everybody smoked okay, everywhere, but there's right? no lighter. Oh, there is, right there. Yeah, yeah the lighter's here. That. It works. Right Everything works. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Beautiful car, Bill. All right. Let's come on out. Hey, I notice you kind of always lock the door. Yeah, I just naturally do that. I don't know why. I just... Force uh, a habit? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. I think it goes gorgeous. back to the days when my brother and I, my father had an old big car and we used to lie in the back window on the back. You can get away with a lot of things in the old days, right? And my brother was on a second. You used to lay across the back yeah. while he's driving? Yeah. Oh, forget about seat belts and car yeah, seats. Yeah, yeah. We were all over the place. And my brother one day was in the back seat and the door opened up and he fell out and rolled out. And we'd still talk about it to this really? day. It's funny, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, my father turned the corner. My brother fell out, Derek. And, what was uh, the car? It was a 56 Buick. Oh, yeah. Wide enough so you can I mean, lie. You can get an entire Yeah, it was just like it was a big there. window. I think it was, yeah, 56 Buick. I think it was, anyway, it was just a big Buick. Yeah. And, uh, and here we are, so. No, it's lovely. Yeah, the 56 Buick is probably I bigger than most apartments in Toronto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Amazing car. Mm. I absolutely love this thing. And I'm so glad you made time for me to come and talk to me and show me this beautiful machine of yours. Hey, you know what? Before I forget. Sure. The little chrome elements at the bottom there. Yep. Again, all stock? All stock. All stock. This isn't there, surely. No, that that trim we just that, that that's put on just like a door. Uh, yeah. But you can you can buy that. I mean, yeah. You can know, they can sell these at the court. But isn't they sell that the these stuff at the court. Yeah, yeah. But so they sell these actually for this specific size already pre-bent. Oh, at really? Clark's or at uh, oh, so California this is, Corvair. This you, is metal. Yeah. Oh, it's not the plastic. No, no. This is no. This is metal. This Very is, cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. First of all, let me thank you. I really appreciate your time today. She's absolutely beautiful. Thank you again. Thanks for having me, Kevin. I appreciate your time as well, and uh, and thanks for allowing me to showcase, uh, you know, the Chevrolet Corvair uh, that you know, had a bad rap, but really was safe in the end. Uh, Absolutely, it really is a safe vehicle, and it's a testament, isn't it, to something that wants to keep on living, and why not give it the life? Yeah. So thanks, Kevin. All right, it's fantastic. Thank you.